just as sunflowers chase the sun. Inductees into the South Dakota Hall of Fame chase their dreams day after day, year after year. The 700 plus inductees in the Hall of Fame come from all backgrounds and corners of our state. What their stories have in common is their unwavering courage and belief in their dreams. These dream chasers are an inspiration for us all to strive for excellence and believe in our own potential to chase dreams well into the future. Dream Chaser James E. Emery was inducted in 2014. James, an electrician for Black Hills Power, began his passion project in the 1950s to save the Lakota language through the stories and songs of Lakota elders. Long after James passed in 1977, his son, Jim Emery, retired manager of Black Hills Power's Southern Hills office, worked tirelessly to preserve the priceless collection. Today, James Emery's grandson, David Emery, chairman and CEO of Black Hills Energy, together with the South Dakota Hall of Fame, is working on digitizing the Lakota language and music collection for all to hear. I always enjoyed the time I spent with my grandpa, but I didn't fully appreciate what he was teaching. You know, when he would take us out and walk us through places and tell stories and, and do all those things. And, you know, we would always run down and when he was in his recording studio, we would always run down there. Half the time he'd tell us to get out because he had somebody down there. But when he didn't, he would explain what he was doing and he'd play us some tapes and so show us how to make records and, you know, those sorts of things. Grandpa, how do you say this, which is what I used to do from a language perspective, or Grandma, how do you say this? I didn't really try to learn. I just, you know, I was around and heard enough things that I picked up things. Yeah. But I didn't really have a, an inclination that I should try to learn this from him while I still could. But I didn't really appreciate what the impact was. Probably until I was you know, maybe 12, 11, 12. But then he died when I was, I think, 14, not quite 15. They knew that he recorded a lot of tapes and they've heard from us what happened, but I don't think any of them have really had an opportunity to listen to many of them. Really interesting story, wounded knee of being shot and you know doing all these things. Um, they haven't listened to many of those. And so that's one thing that I would like to make sure as they get old enough now to better appreciate what was done. I think your values are imparted from your parents, right? right? I'm a pretty firm believer in that. Yeah, there's other factors that contribute, but you know, they're, they're your primary teachers, parents, grandparents, family. You know, back to my grandfather's time, you know, he valued highly the lessons that his grandmother taught him. Mm -hmm. and, and I think then felt like that should be passed on. Part of that's cultural, right? Yes, absolutely. The, the Lakota culture is very centered around, you know, there's kind of an order in which things are passed on. Mm. So the oldest son has a tendency to be the one who gets a lot of the family history, for example. He knew some of that was his responsibility, okay. right? And I think he was taught that, okay. right? What should you do? What do you feel compelled to do? What gives you pleasure in what you're doing? Makes you feel better, maybe helps teach kids, your kids, whatever, mm. that, that drives kind of how I act and what I do, and I, I think less about, well, what's that gonna mean 30 years from now, right? Now, in the utility business, it's different in that we invest in 40-year infrastructure. Okay. So there's, a, there's an element that yeah, no matter sure. what you do when you're building things sure. in this business that you know will be there for at least one, if not two generations, at a minimum. But I, you don't really think about it that way. I mean, we make decisions with a long-term planning horizon on a business perspective.